Blessings. I'm gospel recording artist appointed. Please stay tuned for Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show, created and hosted by Apostle John E. Ross. Trying to do what's right, but it does. John E. Ross, creator and host of this podcast, lead apostle and founder of the Omega International Prophetic Ministries, and thank you for tuning in for Season 5 of the Let's Talk to the Lord Gospel Radio Talk Show.
Kingdom, our guest for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is Pastor Jamel Strong. Pastor Strong is a ordained minister and singer-songwriter that sang his first solo at the age of six and has not stopped singing since. As a teenager, Pastor Strong sang on his first national recording produced by the legendary Ben Tankard. Pastor Jamel Strong, welcome to Let's Talk to the Lord. Thank you so much. It is an honor to be here, and I am excited about um, spending some time talking about the greatness and the goodness of Jesus and all that he's afforded me to do in um, expanding the gospel. Thank you. Amen. And before we get into our discussion, please tell the kingdom your story of repentance and when you began your journey with Christ Jesus. Wow. Well, you know, being a um, the child of a, of a preacher, a PK, <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, could, I was raised in the fear and the admonition of Christ, so... Um, I grew up hearing about the gospel, hearing the gospel and around it. But I would say at the age of around 11 years old, I made a conscious decision for myself yeah. to tell God yes. And, and that yes um, also, I remember it was at a revival on a Thursday night, uh, evangelist Josephine Watson. See, I can tell you, she was preaching, and my heart, the word of God that, that came forth, it pricked my heart in a way that was so powerful. I told God, yes, I gave him my life. And uh, that next night I was filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Really, I was filled before I got there. But I was filled with the power of the Holy Spirit with um, evidence of gifts and even as I matured, even more gifts being evident. So I gave my life to the Lord, and I just began to grow in the things of him. It is such an honor to be able to live for Jesus and to know that he graced me. When I went left, he didn't throw me away. But that yes has still remained to my, in my life even now. Yes, Lord. And Pastor Jamel Strong, please, sir, announce our topic, begin our discussion, and let's go to the Word of God. Uh, worshiping in a pandemic. Yes. Uh, so, you know, it it is interesting that... We're, as we live our lives and we have certain plans and things that we feel like should go a certain way and the way we thought things would be and we have our little calendars, it is interesting how we never schedule disruption. We yeah. never schedule <laughs> sickness. We never schedule uh, death. We never schedule uh, yes, being uh, made uncomfortable. But the plans that God has for us, are greater than that that we can understand. And that's why I never, uh, I never allow myself to be locked in into one train of thinking when it comes to my life. I've yeah. learned that I am not in control of my life, but that God is in control. He knows all. He sees all. He is the omniscient God. And yeah. so I, I, I live my life allowing him to lead my life. And this pandemic was not something that any of us scheduled. This pandemic is not, in, is not something that any of us ever thought uh, mm-hmm. would take place in our lives. Mm-hmm. That literally, we would, the whole world would be pushed on pause. Yeah. The whole world would be put on pause, that we would come to a place where literally it seems as if um, we didn't know what to do. But the powerful thing about a worshiper is that when they don't have a present, clear instruction about their next, they worship God in their now. Yes. You worship God where you are. And as you worship God, David said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. Yes. The worst thing that we can do is allow worry to be our God. Hallelujah. We, the worst thing we could do is allow um, stress to become our God. Yeah. But when trouble comes, when squeeze the squeeze of life comes upon us, we yeah, have to yeah. find ourselves saying, no matter what's going on, I will still bless the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Worship is water for the believer. Yes, Lord. You know, um, if your body becomes dehydrated, everything about it will shut down if you don't get water to it. Yes. And w- as, as a believer, worship is the necessary ingredient for communication with uh, the Father, for relationship with the Father. And so the way I have found myself uh, worshiping in the pandemic is being intentional about meditating. Yes. Uh, And not just meditating on elevated thoughts, but meditating upon the word of the Lord. The Bible says that when we spend time um, meditating on the word of God, it, it will allow a transformation in our mind to take place. Um, we are renewed and we are refreshed Hallelujah. Uh, by the transforming of our minds. Our minds are transformed by the word of God. So I Preacher. meditate on the word of God. So for every situation that I'm going through, for every turmoil that I'm faced with, instead of spending the majority of my time talking about the problem and focusing on the problem, I spend my time, um, I come to myself, I shake myself. Uh, I have to do like David did. David, the Bible says that David washed his face after he was grieving the death of his son. He washed his face uh, and he rose up because he knew that there was more. He had gone through um, disappointing God. He had found himself being a murderer. He had found himself being a trickster and a liar. And he was his son, the son that um, Bathsheba conceived, that they conceived in adultery, had died. Yes. But, and God um, had given David instructions. He wanted the child to live. God told him the child was not going to live. Yes. And when he came to himself and said, wait a minute, I can either be angry about what didn't go the way I wanted to go, or I can worship and ask God what's next. And what I want to encourage somebody that's listening to me right now is you find yourself in a low place where you felt like you couldn't get up and um, even some days you don't even want to take a shower. You don't even want to take a bath. You just feel low. You feel heavy. You feel secluded. Some of you, you feel alone. You feel, you feel lonely. I want you to know, I want to encourage you to wash your face. Yeah, yeah, I want you to wash your face in the natural, but listen, I want you to wash your face in the spirit. I want you just to begin, if you can't find nothing but a piece of a song, um, Jesus, 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 there is something about your name. And you start to talk about the yeah. emphasis of who he is that is greater than the problem. As you began to worship, as you began to give God the glory, there is strength that will begin to come. That yes, literally Lord. that worship will cause you to be quickened and made alive. And you'll be able to know that, that you are alive because there is more. Uh, and when you begin to worship him and honor the Savior. Amen. God will give you, watch this, a strategy for your yes. victory. I don't care how bad it looks. God said, if I can get my people who are literally called by my name in humility to worship me, to yes. worship me, worship is a lifestyle of obedience. If I can get you to worship me, to um, throw down the idol gods, the idol gods of this world, the material yeah. things of this world, and began to worship me. He said, as you worship me, I will give you strategy for your victory right now, and yes, you Lord. will have a strategy to come out of this situation. Worship in the pandemic is important because it, it is your life source. It is your life source. Uh, how, somebody might say, it, as I, I, I just end this, how do I worship in the pandemic? Yes. A song from your heart. Sometimes if you don't, you just begin to sing a melody in your heart, meditating on the word of God, spending time in his presence, uh, then even coming in agreement with another worshiper. Sometimes the Bible says we are helpers one to another. Your, our inheritance is amongst those who are sanctified. Get with somebody who might be a little bit stronger than you feel on that day, and they'll speak life into you. And then on another day, you'll end up spending, speaking life into someone else. There's power yeah. in agreement. I want you to know that 
in this pandemic, we are not enslaved. We are not bound. But a worshiper is free no matter where they are. The three Hebrew boys were thrown in the fiery furnace, but they were not bound. They had chains on them, but they didn't have chains in them. My worship delivers and liberates me no matter what situation I'm going through. I want to encourage you to worship even in this time, that this pandemic that we're going through. You have the victory. Amen. Amen. And amen again. Now, truly, Pastor, we are in the same area with the words that God has given us concerning this topic. Kingdom, the Hallelujah. topic for this episode of Let's Talk to the Lord is worship in the pandemic. Kingdom, Hallelujah. as I research the entomology of worship, I learned that the word itself is derived from an old English word meaning to venerate. Venerate means to reverence, worship, and adore, honor, and admire profoundly and respectfully and to love. Veneration entails respect and admiration of our God. So in other words, veneration tells us how we feel about who we are worshiping. In the Bible, veneration of the saints is the act of honoring a saintly person who has been identified as having a high degree of sanctity or holiness. Now, where I'm going with this, Pastor Strong, is I think that worship in or during this pandemic has thrashed out religion or being religious and has separated out those who are in real relationship with God through Jesus Christ from those who look to whom they may classify as a godly person which may be the reason many closed and some just stopped worshiping altogether. But for those of us in relationship with God through Jesus Christ, we are already postured in faith and we drew closer to him. But unfortunately, many allow this thing to separate them from the love of God. Apostle Paul so eloquently delivering a sermon to us in the book of Romans, the 8th chapter, the 35th through the 39th verses, where he declares who or what shall separate us from Christ's love. Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation or calamity and distress or persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword, even as it is written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Kingdom, because our veneration to God is rooted in love, the divine agape love, meaning verse 38, for I am persuaded, beyond doubt, meaning I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending. Impending means which are of an event regarded as threatening or significant or about to happen or forthcoming, continuing the scripture, and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, verse 39, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Kingdom, our worship in relationship is in regards to the quality and the characteristic possessed by us, meaning during this pandemic, our worship should possess the reverent honor and homage to God. Kingdom worship also means to bow down to God, to the will of God in faith and obedience. We worship Jesus because of his humanity, and we worship Jesus because of his saving grace towards us and his humility and sacrifice upon the cross as the mercies of God to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our spiritual 
worship and our reasonable service. Echoing the words of Paul, thus, our worship during the pandemic should be, as I just said, even if it's at a church, at home, outside, in the drive through or virtual, or with a mask, and in social distancing, we continue to love on God with a pure heart and then experiences God's love back to us and all the benefits and grace and favor that will come with it. Pastor Strong, the Holy Spirit is saying many are angry at God, hurt yes. and confused because of what has transpired in this past season and mm -hmm. what that disappointment and frustration and hurt is screaming aloud through the worship. My advice, Pastor Strong, is to those who find themselves in this situation to go to your secret closet. Be honest and tell God how you feel and repent and allow God the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus to minister and heal you so you will worship authentically and not just going through the motions of worship in Jesus name pastor Jamel strong please give the final words on our discussion worship in the pandemic in everything yeah give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you we won't understand everything that's going on, but if we could take the same model that, hallelujah, that, that, that literally we saw when God told his men, his men and women, to do something that seemed uncomfortable for them, yes. that literally, despite how they felt, they still had a yes, and they did it. Worship is a lifestyle of obedience. It's a lifestyle of obedience. And as we exhibit worship yeah. to the Father, he strengthens us for the assignment. Amen. Amen and amen again. Pastor Jamel Strong, please, sir, introduce yourself to the kingdom. I am Jamel Strong. Um, from literally, uh, officially, uh, originally, excuse me, from Huntsville, Alabama. I now reside in Baltimore, Maryland. I am a, an ordained minister, singer, songwriter, um, and I'm just honored to be a servant in the kingdom and to spread the gospel of Jesus right, Christ through word and song. Amen. And what are your social medias so that the public can reach out to you? Yes, my social media is... Um, um, on Instagram, um, Facebook, Twitter, all of them, it's Jamel Strong, J-A-M-E-L-S-T-R-O-N-G, at Jamel Strong. And you can reach me, and my website is jamelstrong.org. I tell people I'm not hidden. You can find me very easily, J-A-M-E-L-S-T-R-O-N-G. On all Pastor social Strong, media handles. Please tell us about the music you selected for this podcast. Jehovah Reigns and My Hands Are Lifted Up. Yes, Jehovah Reigns is a song that is an up tempo praise song that the Lord allowed me to release that has blessed many people. Many praise teams around the world have sang it. And My Hands Are Lifted Up is a song that I wrote over 20 years ago that I re released. And that has also been re-recorded by many people. My hands are lifted up, and my heart is ready to receive. Amen. Please tell us where we can purchase your music, and how may we support your ministry? Thank you. You can find my music um, everywhere digital music is sold. Also, you can um, find it directly with me on my website again, uh, Jamel Strong, J-A-M-E-L-S-T-R-O-N-G, dot org jamelstrong dot org and you can um, find it um, there and I'd love to connect with you and get that up uh, to you. Amen. Kingdom. Before we hear the music of Pastor Strong, 
You can listen to Pastor Strong's music on Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International. It is in rotation there. You can request it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Let's Talk to the Lord can be heard on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Alexa, YouTube. You can download episodes from Speaker.com. You can hear us every Monday on Elation Radio and at PositivePower21.org. Just go there, click on Menu. You, click on Media Room and Let's Talk to the Lord. Click on it for every episode. Every Saturday, we are on Sensational Sounds Radio at 11 a.m. Central Time. Please write to us and let's talk to the Lord at yahoo.com. Please visit our website, let's talk to the Lord Radio. International. Please follow us on Twitter at Roth. Apostle, please download our app on the Google App Play Store on your cell phone under the name Let's Talk to the Lord Radio. On Let's Talk to the Lord Radio International, we have 24-7 music, talk, interviews, news, and much more. Kingdom, you can now ask Alexa to begin Let's Talk Radio International. My latest music, Lord, Give Me Another Chance, featuring recording artist Sean Scales and Tamara Lloyd, is available on all digital platforms, so please pick up a copy. And under the name Minister John E. Ross, my EP, remember now thy creator is still available. So until next time, may God bless you and may God keep you living your lives at the foot of the cross under a open heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I just want you to forget about everything else and just lift your hands. Will you worship him with me tonight? Come on, let's worship him. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to open your mouth. Just speak of his goodness. All the worshipers, join me. Join me tonight. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you, a blessing from you. Ready to My heart is ready to Blessing from you. I need it tonight, God. A blessing.
blood rest rule and abide in your heart. It's forth now and forevermore. Receive in God an empowerment to prosper. I feel I'm in this place right now. Every worshiper, open your mouth. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, lift your voice. We are in Jesus. We pray your name. Thank you, Jesus, yeah. Have your way in this house, God. Shift your weight in this house, God. We bow down before you. We bow down before you. We bow down before you. The angels cry, holy, holy. 